Now I'm going to tackle this John Deere 350B dozer. I'm going to go under the assumption this is going to be an extremely easy job. All I did was bring a fresh battery. Um, I know this ran when parked, and being a diesel, uh, hopefully the motor has stayed in decent condition inside. And the reason it was parked was the steering clutches. Uh, it didn't steer either direction. So um, that's going to be a bit of an issue. We'll have to figure out how to get around that one. But as far as starting it goes, um, it should be turnkey, right? Let's get into this here. I'm assuming the door opens somehow. Uh, looks like it used to have a handle here. Um, that would be handy if I had it. Oh, feels like feels like it's latched in there. Let's see if the other side opens. You can see this has a nifty feature. It's a six-way power blade. Uh, not only does it do the standard up and down, it also does the angling, and it's got a cylinder on the side there, so the whole thing can tilt. Uh, so it's a nice little machine. This has been sitting for a while. So we need to get that door open. You can see all the way over there, the door is latched. All right, let's assume on the inside that you're meant to pull the handle this way. So that means I have to turn this direction. Oops. There we go. All right, we have spider webs. Lots of spider webs. Hi, spiders. Yeah, don't see too many active things coming out at me. That's always a good sign. As you can see, we have nice organic carpeting here. So uh, it'll be cushy. Uh, let's see, if I remember correctly, we got a transmission there. This, I think, was a forward and reverse uh, hydraulic deal. Steering, obviously, throttle, plow control, and that's a joystick that twists and moves and does all sorts of fun things. And, uh, yeah, some paddles. Some of this does stuff. Let's find out what. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the spider webs and throw the battery in. ATF funnel. Handy tool. Great for collecting spider webs. Got a few there. The good battery I brought with me doesn't fit. So I stole the tiny battery out of my Jeep. Uh, this is an old battery, the cheapest one I can get, Group 26. I've got connectors going to a tiny battery. They didn't really fit well, so the connections are bad. Uh, that is promising. Turned over, that's a good sign. Now, I saw the oil pressure gauge move, so I think we're going to be good there. Um, and has its own can of starting fluid. Let's see if a bottle this old works. Well, that was promising. Let's try it again. Time to check the fuel. Fuel tank's all locked up. Got a big padlock on it, so I can't get to actually looking in the level. Let's see if I can find that key. I just realized that uh, even if I can get to the fuel tank, I don't have any diesel right now. So I'm gonna give it one more shot, and then I gotta run to town and get fuel, uh, if I can find the key. So, do that next. But one more shot, maybe it'll work. All right, I gotta get diesel. Um, the good news is, as soon as I, it fires up for that little bit, oil pressure shoots right up, so that's a good thing. Uh, check the coolant. I didn't see any, so I might need some of that too. 
uh, but we'll have to get it running first before we even worry about it overheating. I found the key, got the cap off. There's a screen in the way, so I didn't get a reading of how much fuel is in there, but I added about three gallons, so it's got more than it did. Uh, so I'm gonna try it again, see how it goes. sounding real weak. I gotta get another battery in this or really juice that one up. So uh, I'll be back in a few minutes. I've been letting the battery charge and the starter cool down for a little bit while I hunted down a can of starting fluid that is less than 20 years old. So uh, Give this a shot, see what happens. All right, gotta do something different. I'm not doing it like this. That's too much starting fluid. We need to figure out what's wrong here. Now under the hood here, the fuel injection system on diesels is pretty simple, especially these old ones. Basically, what you have here is an injector, and pressure comes out of the injection pumps, goes in here, spurts into the cylinder. Uh, if you have air trapped in here, it won't start. Uh, also, if you don't have fuel coming to here, it won't start. So I'm going to loosen up this fitting. Let's see. You can loosen up these fittings just a little bit, crank it over, and you should see fuel spurt out. Uh, if you don't, you got a problem and you know where it is. If you do, uh, you have a different problem. Now you don't need to undo these lines all the way. Just crack them so you can see some leakage. All right. Now we crank it over and we should see leakage on those two. Not seeing anything. That's not a good sign. That means we're not getting fuel. So it's good we stopped with the starting fluid. Let me show you a little bit how this fuel system works. Right here we have a mechanical pump, just like you'd have on a regular gas car, that pumps the fuel from the tank upwards. Goes through a filter, then goes through another set of filters. These probably are water separators too, I expect. Um, then across the other side, comes out. This is a fitting where it goes into the injector pump. Uh, into the injector pump, there's a solenoid here that's electric that turns the uh, flow on and off. And then it goes out to each of the individual cylinders. In this case is a three cylinder. There's three lines, each going to an injector. Up here at the injectors, um, these are basically like a pop-off valve where basically you put high pressure to them. And when they have enough pressure, they go and squirt the fuel into the cylinder. Uh, so that's each injector, each one has a line. They get the pressure at the time that cylinder is supposed to fire, all determined by this injector pump. We don't have any fuel up here at the injector. So the next thing is see if we have fuel at the uh, pump, at the injector pump. So I'm gonna crack this line and see if that lift pump is giving us any fuel at all. So we'll crack this line down here. All right, I'm gonna open this one up a little more because this is a fairly low pressure compared to those injector, uh, the injector lines. All right, I see fuel dripping already. That's a good sign. We got fuel spurting, so we're in good shape there. So uh, let me tighten that back up. This is one other thing I'm gonna check. Uh, this has an electric shutoff on the fuel and that's what turns this thing off. Um, I want to see if that's getting power. Maybe we have a power issue where it's not even trying to turn the motor on. Now I've got two electrical connectors here. I'm just going to assume one's positive and one's negative because that would make sense. So I'm going to hook my test light up to one that I think is ground. 
and tech to test the other one. Now the ignition's not on, so we're not getting anything that makes sense. Now I've turned the ignition on. I got a connection, we got power. All right, just to check it the other way, I'm gonna turn it off, make sure that light turns off. Yep. All right, so power is going to that solenoid. So, let's see, what is our next step? I've got fuel going to here, and I've got power going to this uh, cutoff, but I've got nothing coming out of this pump. So, there's a couple possibilities. It could be the pump itself, or, easier to check, it could be, uh, there might be a strainer on this inlet, so I'm gonna check for that. Also, this electric solenoid, I know power is going to it, but just because it's getting power doesn't mean it's doing anything. So we're going to check that too. But first I'm going to clean all this up a little bit. This is a strainer on the inlet that actually looks totally clean. I'm going to make sure it's clean, but uh, I don't think that's the problem. Just got to clean it off now that I've laid it on the tracks. All right, now this solenoid, I already checked that there was power. But you can see a spark. I'm not hearing anything move. There's no click of anything moving inside. So I wonder if that solenoid's stuck. So we're gonna check that next. There's only three screws that hold this whole top cover on. There's our solenoid. And uh, there's the actual fuel shut off. Got the power on. Gonna try grounding to, oh, say a manifold. There it goes, so that's what it should do. I was just trying to figure out how this whole thing worked. And I was wondering what the solenoid triggered. There is a little sliding bar in here that now slides easy. Uh, I believe this is the actual fuel shutoff. It was stuck all the way over, well, it was stuck halfway or so. It was basically stuck and wouldn't move free. And maybe just wiggling that thing maybe might have done it. So we're gonna put this whole thing back together and give it a shot. I've gotten it all buttoned back up. We're gonna crank her over and see if those injectors have any juice coming out of them now. I'm hearing a click and I'm seeing juice. So we're gonna tighten these up and see what we got. Fingers crossed. That sounded promising. right there. I'm going one step further. We're going to see if she still moves. That's definitely a win. Um, I'm kind of psyched now. Taking it one step further, because I know these steering clutches need work. Uh, I'm actually not going to get to them anytime soon, but my brother all might. So uh, I just got to get this thing back to the shop where uh, it can be worked on easy. So uh, I have no steering whatsoever. I checked it again, still doesn't steer. Didn't magically fix itself over the years. And uh, so that's going to be a little interesting to try to figure out how to drive it without steering. But uh, it moves back and forth, so that's most of it. That was the end of the day when I got this running, so it's another day now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and top off the coolant here. Um, oil's good, and uh, I'm going to try to warm this thing up and actually move it somewhere.
All right, it's all buttoned up again. This is gonna be a complete cold start. It's been uh, about two days since I ran this. Um, I'm going to start it cold, no starting fluid, nothing. Just to see what happens. That same tiny little battery.
probably going backwards. I'm gonna try backing up the bulldozer and hopefully the truck will back to the anchor and turn it. That's it for now. This is a fun little project. Uh, I thought it would be really easy, end up being a lot more interesting. So uh, that's always a bonus. And it worked, it runs, it actually sounds real good now. It starts right up, uh, drives, and uh, someday we'll deal with the steering, but not today. So uh, that's it for now. Hope you guys are having fun, and I'll keep having fun with another project.